from the outside, Rick Churchio's place still looks like the hundred-year-old factory it once was. We filled in a door up top. It used to be a fire escape over there. But everything else on the outside is pretty much original. Why don't you come in and take a look? I'll show you the rest of it. I wanted it like a cave setting. You know, that was my, the idea in my head, how I was going to make that happen. I wasn't really too sure at the time. Rick's a real estate developer, and fortunately, renovating this Bayonne, New Jersey property wasn't his first project. Because when it came to creating a cave pool in the basement, he was pretty much on his own. There isn't too many places you can call and say, listen, I'm putting in a cave. Uh, you don't look in the yellow pages and look under cave people to try to make a cave. So we were pretty just much making it up as we went along. The rocks were made from wire mesh and the cave walls from sprayed concrete. Rick painted the traditional pool black to resemble natural water. $60,000 later, he had himself a cave. I'm thinking about having hieroglyphics put on the wall. But Rick's not really living in the Stone Age. Upstairs, you'll find 2,500 square feet. Rick created three bedrooms, two baths, one area that serves as living room, dining room, and kitchen. It's not a very big kitchen, but it kind of opens up into the whole house. It all kind of flows like one room. This is probably one of my favorite spots in the whole house because here you have the piano here. I can't play, but I look good sitting behind it and acting like I'm playing. This is a journey. When he bought the building, Rick hadn't intended to make it home. But it's his job to spot deals. And when he saw this place, he saw potential. I bought the building for like $120,000. And then I was try to figure out what I was going to do with it. The building had been a sewing factory for as long as anyone could remember. When Rick bought it, it had factory rooms upstairs and down. And it was still pumping out sheets. They had sewing machines screwed down to the floors all the way along this whole length of the building. But Rick was sure the original maple floors could be salvaged. The reason people use maple in factories is because maple is one of the hardest woods there are. You could hit it with a hammer, and it's uh, almost indestructible. So Rick decided to turn it into a home. The question was, where to start? I kind of just sat on the stump across the street and thought about it. Then I went and sat on the steps across the street on the other side, looked at it from that side of the street, and decided I was going to do something different. And different he did. From the kitchen layout, the microwave I, I mounted under the sink to the walls. Kind of looks like an upside down guitar. To that downstairs grotto. Rick poured his heart and soul into this house. So it's a pretty cool place to live. It's like the back cave. And like the rest of Batman's toys, these wild ideas weren't cheap. The house may have cost 120000 but by the time the dust had settled and the pool was filled, Rick had dropped 400 more. We tried to save whatever we could. These pieces of timber right here were actually the girders that used to hold this building up in the basement. It's hard to come by lumber like this. And I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I just knew I didn't want to throw them away at the time. And then when we got to this mantle, I said, you know what, let's use these so at least this part of the old building is still, you know, existing in here. And I, I like it. In fact, Rick liked it all so much so that when he was done, he found he just couldn't let the place go. I liked it so much when it was finished, I decided to move in. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Up next.